All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are down in the description and in the top end comment if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. And apologies if you hear my cat digging at the door. She doesn't like when I shut myself in here to record videos. So this time we're looking at a concept I came up with called the Real Producer Graveyard, the definition of which I have changed over the course of time since it does take a while for any oil producer of any size to actually deplete everything like the Philippines has and go down to zero. So now the grave markers in the oil producer graveyard are simply filled with oil producers who are basically spent. So in no particular order whatsoever, we are starting with Trinidad and Tobago, the island's nation off the coast of Venezuela. They once produced up their peak around 230,000 barrels per day or so, and that was way back in the 70s and 80s. And they're just about done. And they're about to cease being an oil exporter. But their oil production now averaging around close to 50,000 barrels per day. And their domestic oil consumption levels are usually just a few thousand barrels below that in the 40,000s. Denmark had a sizable enough portion of the North Sea oil for itself. So when all of that offshore boom stuff started, they got in on that as well, and what their territory held was enough to eventually take them up to around 400,000 barrels per day for a while, and that was in the early 2000s. They inevitably reached the end of their ability to hold that, though, and have since been meandering their way down their decline slope, now down to around 60, sometimes down to 50,000 barrels per day. So they're starting to reach the end of their lifespan. Romania had two different peaks. One before World War II, or leading right up to World War II, as Romania did have a decent bit of oil. It did have the topography set up and the geology for it. And they got up into several hundreds of thousands before World War II. However, damage to their fields from bombing campaigns during World War II ended that for a while. And it took them a couple decades afterwards to get back up to similar levels, hitting about 350,000 in the 1970s, which was their ultimate final peak, from which they have slid down their long terminal decline slope down to now around 50,000 barrels per day. Cameroon, down in eastern Africa, once was up around 150,000 barrels per day back in the 90s. And they sort of wobbled a bit down from that, down through 140, 130, but still holding up in that area for a little while. But have finally been on a final downward slide now, and have come all the way down, similar to Romania, to about 50,000 barrels per day. And are about to become a net importer, as their domestic oil consumption levels are around that of Trinidad and Tobago around 40,000 or a bit above that. Yemen had already peaked in oil production before the Civil War and everything that followed. They peaked up at about 450 and had slid their way down to below 300,000 and were starting to work their way down through the upper 200s. Then the Civil War and everything started, which has taken them down repeatedly to zero, with sometimes enough stability coming in some areas to let some fields turn back online, and they've gone back up as high as 75,000 a few times. However, they are effectively finished at this point because they were already down into the upper 200,000s, and they would not be able to recover back up to that, even if they were able to reactivate every field, because when you have oil fields that have been producing for a long time suddenly shut down for extended periods of time, those oil fields will not be able to return to full production capacity because throughout their production life, they'd been running on a declining but semi-reinforcing pressure gradient as oil at the points of the well entries would flow up the wells, but lower the pressure in that immediate area surrounding the puncture of the field from that particular well, thus creating a pressure gradient that would cause oil from the further outward area away from that to flow to that area and then up the wellhead. Although the overall pressure in the oil field rains as the field depletes. So when you have an oil field that's been producing for a long time and then you suddenly shut it off, closing those wells still leaves those points of somewhat lower pressure that the oil then will still flow to that area, just 
not up and out the well because the well's been tapped off. So the oil throughout the reservoir then has time to even out and settle out within itself in a total decently lessened pressure gradient overall than the already lowered pressure gradient was because the field had been producing for so long already. So even if all of Yemen's fields were reactivated right this instant, they would never be able to actually get back up into the upper 200,000s. Tunisia, over in North Africa, one of the producers in the graveyard with the lowest peak, because I did set some gatekeeping standards for the oil producer graveyard. So Tunisia is one of the lowest, and at their peak, they were at 120,000 barrels per day, and I was back in the 80s and 90s, from which they have tumbled their way down past the end of their capabilities, all the way down now to only about 30,000 barrels per day. Sudan, before splitting into two countries, peaked at about 600,000 barrels per day, and they had declined to about 400,000 already on their regular natural decline slope. Then the country split in half, with each country getting about 200,000 barrels per day. However, the northern half, or just Sudan, was left with more rapidly depleting fields, and their production declined a lot faster than South Sudan's has. Sudan itself, the northern chunk, is or was already down to about 50,000. And then the civil war between the two different military dictators that started last year sort of brought an end to that remaining 50,000 barrels per day. Syria never had as much petroleum as the other nations in that general area, as their eastern portion is kind of where the topography and geology that allowed for the hydrocarbon-rich Persian Gulf nations terminates. But the country did have some, enough to eventually get up to a peak of 600,000 barrels per day, and they declined down from that naturally to about 400,000, then the Civil War started, which dropped them down to zero repeatedly, occasionally turning fields back on and off here and there. However, similarly to Yemen, because of the reasons we described with that, they would never actually be able to fully come back up to those levels. Uzbekistan tied with Tunisia as the lowest allowed producer in the graveyard, was also once up at 120,000 barrels per day, and that was back in the 90s from which they have declined their way down to only about 30,000 now, both they and Turkmenistan being in the same situation. What both of them have is predominantly natural gas as opposed to petroleum, whereas their northern neighbor Kazakhstan is actually in the opposite situation, where it has a whole lot of oil, but not a lot of natural gas. Back over in Europe real quick, Germany also had a setup allowing at least some petroleum. They did, back in the 60s, manage to get up close to 200,000 barrels per day, not entirely reaching it. They were around like 175 or 180, from which they declined. And a bit of a recovery with their small portion of the North Sea when that offshore stuff started. But since that, there's nothing left for them, so what they have has just been declining as it would, and they're now down to around 30,000 and are about to start dropping into the 20,000s. And the final official member is Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea had a very traditional bell curve of oil production, hitting a peak up around 400,000, from which they have been on their decline slope and are now down all the way to hitting as low as 55,000 barrels per day or so. And as for future members, who's going to be the most likely next addition to the graveyard? That will probably be Peru, as Peru was once up at 200,000 barrels per day, but has since declined all the way down to about 50. However, they do have a decent bit of unexplored territory, but it's not likely to hold too much, because while they and their southern neighbor Bolivia have decent topography supporting the initial assumption of hydrocarbon presence like Ecuador and Colombia do. They do not share the second critical component, that obviously being the actual geology, whereas you can see, obviously, from the heights of production that Colombia and Ecuador reached, those two do. That supporting geology begins to terminate once it enters Peru, and by the time it gets down to Bolivia, there's only sparse patches of it remaining. But that's the end of this one. Thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. 
PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. You only do so if you actually can. Also, links to all kinds of Google Docs are in the description where I've made condensed data compilations and graphs of all kinds of data, oil and gas, energy, metals, mining, demographic stuff. It's all there for free 24-7. A link to my Catch channel will be in the top pinned comment as always. And may God bless and protect all of you. I will see you all around next time.